Martin. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you. I hope that you and your family are not only just weathering this storm that we all find ourselves in the midst of, that you are actually not just surviving, but thriving. And that's what today is all about. And I have to tell you that it does take a good bit more than a global pandemic to derail the growing boulder train of inspiration. So welcome all of you to our first ever virtual edition of Growing Boulder Presents. In just a moment, uh, I am going to introduce you to one of my favorite speakers of all time. He is a guy whose message is relevant any day of any year, but on this day, in this year, it is indeed more relevant than ever. And before we get to Dr. Jim Smith Jr., a reminder that uh, Growing Boulder Presents really is an ongoing series in which we uh, effort to bring to you in partnership with the Center for Health and Well-Being an eclectic list of thought leaders, of people who think outside the box, of change makers, of agents, uh, agents of transformation, of which Dr. Jim Smith is. And, and before we get to him, I talked to Jim the other day and I said, I'm going to play a video uh, before we get started. And he said, would you play this video? So a quick disclaimer, I've never been at the controls of a Zoom webinar, so uh, bear with me if this doesn't go uh, exactly right. Uh, but I wanna share with you the Growing Boulder uh, brand video. Now is not the time to retire from life. This is not the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of what's next. We're not made to withdraw from life as we get older. We're made to lean in, to seize each moment, to value every breath. We're made to be bold and to take risk. We're made to help others and protect the weak in our tribes. We are the most creative, fearless, selfless, passionate, compassionate, empathetic animal that has ever walked the face of the earth. We didn't choose to be all that. It chose us, it's in our DNA, it's who we are. It's time we quit suppressing it and start expressing it. Age is not a disease, it's an opportunity. Something to be grateful for and not ashamed of. Stop apologizing for growing older and be grateful that you are. The truth and the magic is this. If we can change our belief system about aging, we can change the way we age. But the mind believes, the body embraces. Always believe that the rest of your life can be the best of your life. Don't mourn what's lost. Celebrate what remains. Don't identify with limitation. Embrace possibility. Close your eyes and imagine someone who is 60, 80, or even 100. Now imagine more, a lot more. Now, go make it happen. Stop growing older. Start growing bolder. It's more than a brand, folks. It is a movement, and Dr. Jim Smith Jr. is indeed one of the leaders of the movement. This is a guy who speaks all over the world uh, to heads of big corporations, to groups of executives, to individuals, all that are anxious to get the most out of their life, to squeeze the most out of each and every moment. And, you know, there's all sorts of different types of motivational speakers. Some are just all bluster. They're dynamic. They're loud. Uh, Dr. Jim Smith Jr. is dynamic, but, but he is controlled passion. This guy is a slow burn, and by the time he's done, you will be ready uh, to ignite. Let's bring in Dr. Jim Smith Jr. I told you folks, this is the first time I'm pushing the buttons. Dr. Jim, are you there? I am here, and you are doing a phenomenal job. You can be my pilot any day, Mark. <laughs> you know, you're kind to say that. And, and folks, uh, I don't want to steal his thunder because I know he's got something special planned today. He's going to walk us through three very important keys to being successful, not just on any day, as I said uh, previously, but, but on this day in particular. So, you know, Dr. Jim, first of all, before you get going, uh, you're looking great. I, I love the red jacket. Uh, you're coming to us live from your office in Philadelphia. I see yes. some of the... Uh, 
Eagles and uh, your other buddies in the background. How's life? Are you doing okay? It's good. It's good. Actually, I'm on, I'm on fire and my mindset has adjusted and now it's exploding relative to what we're dealing with. And initially it was the knee jerk reaction of, what am I going to do? I've never been here before. How am I going to pay my bills? My sessions have been postponed. And after a three day pity party and feeling sorry for myself, uh, I righted the ship and now I'm back. I'm so back. You know, you, you, I, I love the word that you said, uh, you've adjusted, you've accommodated. Uh, it, it makes sense. We all get it, but it's hard to do it. How do we get over the pity party that we all have found ourselves in probably more than one time or another? Here's an initial quote that's a common thought, but not a common practice. And that is when things go wrong, don't go with them. When things go wrong, don't go with them. We tend to follow those things. And as a result, they permeate our mind, they permeate our thinking, they permeate our vocabulary. We post about them, we link in about them where it's nonstop. And when people attempt to give us feedback or anecdotes or tips and tools to move out of there, unfortunately, we like to stay back at the pity party and have another rerun of the same chorus, the same verse, the same lyrics. So it's really pivoting, it's adjusting, and it's moving forward. And it's, I'll be sharing momentarily, it's, it's where your focus is. You know, it's a great point. And I don't wanna make social media any more important than it is, because you know I think at times it can be both profound and, and very, very shallow. But I, I read something somewhere where it said it really is a good reflection of, of where any of us are at a particular moment. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've got friends that I would say 95% of everything that they post on social media uh, is negative. You know, yeah. so, so-and-so mistreated me. I'm sick of this. I don't know this. Uh, and ultimately, you just end up not paying attention to them anymore because it gets very tedious and I can't help but think uh, that they create some of that. You know, what we think about, we bring about. Yeah, what you focus on grows. And, and that's, Mark, what you're saying is so profound and it happens every day. You become what you talk about, who you're around, what you think, and it becomes a part of who we are each and every day. And we don't even realize it. Well, before you get to your first uh, of your three little uh, sessions today, let me just say, I, I totally believe that. And, and, and we've had this conversation before. They say, folks, that you end up being, you know, pretty much the aggregate of the five people you hang around with the most. And I am proud to say, uh, albeit it's been almost exclusively virtual lately, that I've been hanging out with this guy. And anything <laughs> I can do to be more like him, I'm all about it. So, uh, Dr. Jim, uh, you know, give us, your, give us your first insight today. The first point, number one, is to own, own your choices, to own them. Mark, I remember back in 1984, I got my first real job in corporate. And I knew it was a real job because I had my own cubicle. I had my own typewriter with the automatic correction. <laughs> I had a guest chair and a trash can. I was living it up out loud, yes. In my first two years, I, I did relatively well. I, I believe I got promoted twice. And I'm thinking, I, I love this corporate shuffle. I'm climbing the ladder. I get in early, I stay late. Things are going real well. Mark, I even went back to school to work on my master's degree. I was living the dream, or so I thought. Year three, year four, year five, no promotions. And I had a conversation with my manager on several occasions and I got the obligatory, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. But what I was doing wasn't working. Then the mindset started to move into the victim place. I can't believe they're doing this to me. This is so wrong. I'm working hard. I'm coming in early. I'm staying late. Uh, I'm helping other people. Uh, you name it. 
the fingers were pointed, the blame game. And Mark eventually, oh, actually, before I even go there, I, I knew things were, were really morbid when every time someone got promoted, seemingly it was on a Friday, and seemingly it rained. Because after the promotion announcement, and at the end of the day, when I got in my car to drive home, I would sit in the car with it running and the windshield wipers would essentially talk to me. Loser, loser, loser. I remember driving home, furious after another promotion, made a beeline to my wife, told her everything that had happened. And I, I thought she was gonna say, boo, it's gonna be okay. Mm -mm. She gave me eight words that changed my mindset in my life about owning my choices. She said, what are you going to do about it? What am I gonna do about it? Well, over the course of the next several months and several years, I left my position in marketing, went to human resources training and development, became a trainer, talent developer, helping employees grow and be better in their roles. I left that organization, worked for another one, management development. After three years, left that organization, became a vice president of business learning or business learning resources. And, and Mark, I was there for two years, and then I left there to be a consultant. And after three years as a consultant in 2002, I started my own company. That's how I got here today. Why? Those eight words. What are you gonna do about it? Essentially, she said, own your choices, stop blaming, take responsibility. Mark, if we think about our lives, our lives are a movie and we're starring in it. We're the director. We're writing the script, the screenplay. We, we're living the drama, the love, the action, but we have to own our choices. And as we think about what we're dealing with today, with this virus, this, these unprecedented times, if we're not owning our choices, our steps, our words, then in essence, we're not even starring in our, in our own movie. But we can't blame Corona. We can't blame management. We can't blame our age. We can't blame our spouse. We are starring in that movie, owning our choices. And Mark, when I look in the mirror, I see myself, but you know what else I see when I look in the mirror? I see my choices. I see my choices. My encouragement, tip number one, beginning today and in the future, if you want to continue to grow through life and not just go through life, if you want to live and not exist, own your choices. You know, I love that, Jim. And you know, in a real way, there's so much that's interesting <laughs> uh, in addition to tragic about this pandemic, because I, I think in a, in, in a real way, it is kind of a, a, a microcosm of aging, if you will. Yeah. Even younger people are understanding, uh, you know, what has to happen as we age, because you're, you're so right. We have to learn to accommodate to loss. We have to learn to adjust to loss. We have to learn to ignore all of the naysayers out there. So, you know, you're all, we're all getting a valuable lesson right now, folks, no matter whether you're 20 or 40 or 80, uh, in what it takes to age successfully. And, and that is to uh, ask yourself, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Mark, I failed to say it, but if you can call up that quote, if you can, great. But it's how we finished. I thought it'd be a great way to finish that first point. Yeah, you bet. Give me just one second and I'm sure. going to. Choices are the hinges of destiny by Edwin Markham. And, you know, I love that, Jim. I want to hear what it means to you. I hadn't heard this quote until you shared it with me. But, you know, choices are, are the minute by minute things that happen in the course of a day. And uh, to, to let us know that that is what our destiny hinges on is pretty powerful. It's, it reinforces to me everything as it relates to where we're going in life. Hinge, our, our future, our destiny, our dreams hinge on the choices that we make. Understand the difference between choices and mistakes. 
a lot of people are inclined when something goes wrong to say, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Well, you did something before you made the mistake. You made a poor choice. Very seldom do you hear people say, I made a poor choice. I made a bad choice. But by saying I made a mistake, that lessens the culpability or the responsibility in what happened. I think if we start saying I made poor choices more often, we'll stop making those poor choices and stop making those mistakes. I love that. And let me just add this, and I hope you agree with it. Um, we can't be afraid to make poor choices. We have to learn to make good choices. But, uh, you know, sometimes making poor choices is the way that we learn to make good choices. The worst thing that we can do is to seize up and be afraid to choose at all. Yes. Yeah. All right. Like I said, when I look in the mirror, I see my choices. And I'm looking behind you before we get to point number two. And I see the No Excuses uh, Guide to Success. That book back there, folks, by the way, won a NAACP uh, Image Award of, uh, a few years back. So uh, he's not only a great speaker, he's a great author. All right, Dr. Jim, point number two. Let's get on with that one. Point number two, I, I learned the uh, phrase from one of my mentors, Mike Jones, and it's F-O-T-O which stands for focus on the outcome. And I added, expect success. Focus on the outcome and expect success. Now, Mark, you know, with this virus thing that's going on, people are operating differently. Stores are operating differently. And many of the stores I go in to buy my groceries have a limit on the number of items you can buy in that category. Well, my little guys loves flax milk. Now he drinks his water, he drinks his juice, but he loves flax milk. <laughs> A couple weeks ago, I was out shopping, went to the Wegmans, went to load the cart up with flax milk, and the sign read, two per person like two will get me through the weekend are you kidding me i bought my two but i decided that i would stop home first drop the groceries off and go to another wegmans and buy two more that was the plan drop the groceries off went to the second wegmans and on the way there my phone rang hello it was my wife. She told me that one of the flax milks that I bought was leaking. It had a hole. The milk was coming out. Focus on the outcome. Expect success. I'm going to go to this new Wegmans, and rather than getting two, I'm going to get three. And I know the sign is going to say, you can only get two, but I'm focusing on the outcome. I'm expecting success. I pull in, made a beeline back to where the milk is, got my three other groceries as well in the cart, ready to check out. They're ringing up everything, ringing up everything. Now they get to the obligatory, the three flax milks. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry that there is a limit on the number you can buy and that is two. I knew we had a limit. I, I know that. I, I read the sign. However, I was at a Wegmans earlier and I bought two. Here's my receipt. I bought two and I took it home to come here to buy some more. However, it had a leak in it. And I thought since I already purchased it, here's my receipt that there wouldn't be a problem. Sir, I, I, she called for the manager. The manager comes over. I explain it to him. And he looks at me and he thinks, well, sir, we don't typically do this, but in, for this situation right here, we're gonna make an exception. So yes, you can have the third one. You don't have to pay for it. And the rest is his and her story. You know, Mark, I expected that to happen. Now, who's going to make that up, number one? But, but number two, my mindset is, I didn't do anything wrong. 
I'm focusing on the outcome and I'm expecting success. I believe in life, many of us think about the future, but we forecast failure. This is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to. As a speaker, I've heard other speakers say, they're not going to like me. They're going to be a tough crowd. Really? No, 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 no. You focus on your outcome. You expect success. And I believe that when you take that jump, the universe moves up to catch you or to go with you. Mark, real quick, I'm reminded that my brother went to grad school and part of his grad school was to attend, part of the grad school was to study nine months in France. Ah, my mother was somewhat apprehensive because we didn't have the money to send him or get housing. His student loans hadn't come in. And I'm thinking, no, go, go, focus on the outcome, get that degree, go, go, go. My mother said, no, 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 we don't have the money. This is what happened. He went. And when he got there, he started looking for apartments. The first apartment he found, the guy came downstairs, opened the door. They started talking. The guy, born and raised in Philadelphia, actually two blocks from where we grew up. He said, my brother can come in, live rent-free until his student loans came in. Everything worked out. The loans came in. He graduated on time. He focused on the outcome. We expected success. And I believe that mindset works today, tomorrow, and in the future. I think we have a powerful quote that reinforces that concept of focusing on the outcome, expecting success. Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it is done. Amen. If we look at every little step that it takes, to get something done, most of us wouldn't even begin to, to attempt it. Mm. I agree, Jim. Always seems hard. We're not gonna be able to do it. Even right now, as we think about COVID, people, Mark, are saying, I want things to go back to the way they were. I can't wait till it gets back to the way it used to be. I have news, it's not. That's over. This new normal that we're living in that changes every day is what we're gonna be dealing with for the foreseeable future. Learn how to embrace uncertainty, embrace ambiguity. This is a new normal and it's changing. So focus on the outcome or your outcome. And while you're focusing, expect success. You know, it's a great point and it makes me I'm terrible at remembering dreams, uh, Jim. I can never remember a dream. One dream that I have remembered for years and years and years, and it speaks to that point, and you just made me think of it again. I had a very vivid dream uh, where I was a little pebble in the bottom of a very active stream, and I was trying as hard as I can to stay on the bottom and not get sucked up into the stream because I didn't know where it was going to go and I was frightened and I did everything I could to stay where I was and then finally I was so tired I couldn't uh, I couldn't hang on anymore and I just let go I gave up mm -hmm. and I got into the flow of the water and before you knew it uh, I was going around the bend and I was dropping into cool places I never imagined and you know it was it was it was a message to me I think from the universe because at the time that's exactly where I was and and I think you're so right. The only constant in life is change. And this is something that we deal with as we get older. As we get older, most people become uh, more resistant to change. Uh, yeah. You become afraid. You know, I, I just don't want to risk it anymore. So I'm going <laughs> to stay where I am. And, and that's just a tear. Even if you're where you are is comfortable, uh, living life is about experiencing what happens and understanding that change really is our friend. Change is the vehicle that we ride in to get to what's next. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't, aren't willing to do that, you're never going to experience what's next. You're only going to be able to remember what you used to have. Growing bolder on fire. Yes. What does change and breathing have in common? If you're not doing either, you're probably dead. Amen. Simple as that. 
You're on fire, Mark. You're on fire. <laughs> well, it's a, it it's a, would go on forever, but uh, we are going to move on to point number three, and I know you got another good one for us. Point number three is to show up as the gift. Show up as the gift. What are you talking about, Jeff? And this is every day. This is not just on occasion. I was watching, actually, I was on YouTube, and I was going through music, and, and I saw a video that featured Tom Petty, Steve Winwood, other musicians, including Prince. And they were on the stage, and they were jamming it out, jamming it out, but Prince was on the side. You really couldn't see him. The, the spotlight wasn't on him. The spotlight was on the others. And they're jamming, and all of a sudden, it was Prince's turn to come into the middle. And what happened next was amazing, <laughs> unbelievable, phenomenal, where Prince and that guitar became one. And he became the gift that not only he gave the fellow, his fellow musicians, but the people in the audience as well. And that resonates with me because in life, as speakers, many of us show up and throw up content, really. We're sometimes just happy to be there, whether we're an introvert or we're laid back, we each have gifts in life. And I'm encouraging you as you grow bolder to bring that gift as you everywhere you go. And you know what it is. And sometimes we're apprehensive to bring it out because we worry about how people will receive it. Don't you know that someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality? Bring your gift. Remember a few years ago, I was talking to my good friend, Mike, and Mike, like me, is a trainer and speaker and leadership consultant. And whatever reason, during lunch, we start talking about our interests outside of speaking. I asked Mike, when you're not in front of people traveling, what do you do? He said he was a musician. He plays in a band, had been playing with them for over 20 years. He plays the sax. Mark, I said, shut up. Are you kidding me? Do you ever play your sax during your sessions? It's like, no, that's separate. Work, sax, music, work. I'm like, no, you have this gift. If you are not using that gift during your sessions, man, you have, a, you have an unfair advantage because many speakers don't have that musical advantage. Jim, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some thought. I'll give you some thought. A couple months later, we met for lunch again. He's like, dude, dude, it works, man, it works. During my last session, I, I played my sax to open. I played my sax to close. They loved it. I, I've even changed the name of my company to Right Chord Leadership. There's a picture of a sax on my business card. And I'm going to do it going forward. Now, I've since seen my buddy at conferences since our meeting. And he plays that sax. He shows up as the gift and people go crazy. Mark, do we have a one last cement quote to put the exclamation mark on the idea of showing up as the gift? We do. It's from Anne Frank who said no one has ever become poor by giving. And Jim, why did you select that one? I believe if, if we live in a world of selflessness, generosity, giving of our time, our heart, our mind, of ourselves, because we are a gift, and learning how to utilize, when to utilize, when to leverage, and, and I think as, as we grow bolder, I don't even say older anymore, Mark, as we grow bolder, 
we get more time, I believe, to give, to give of ourselves. I'm meeting a lot of speakers these days who are in their 60s and 70s who are now beginning to get in this industry to start giving, to give their gift because they've lived a number of years. They have a lot of wisdom, a lot of experiences, and they're bringing it with them. So they're beginning their speaking career now. And I love coaching them because they coach me because they've forgotten things that I haven't even learned yet. <laughs> but it's, Mark, you're a gift and you utilize your gift for, for rewriting the narrative on getting older. You speak positivity and, and a, a way of thinking about things that perhaps people didn't think about before. But now you are empowering people to say, look out. Here's my gift. Where's my guitar? Where's my voice? Where's my heart? That's why that quote is important to me. And I love my gift, blessed with it. And I'm looking for ways to utilize it in a variety of ways, not just one lane. 100%. I agree with everything. And, and you know, one of the challenges that I have, uh, Dr. Jim, to be honest with you, is you know, I want to be real careful to not make people think their gift has to be something that is, you know, is going to change the world. Because I think you're right. Now, you know, your gift could be nothing more than being a good listener. Now, that's not yes. going to help you with a yes. speaking career. But yes. you know, one of my favorite things, and I've thought a lot about this because I've read a lot of stuff that say, you know, as we get older, we become more concerned with legacy. And that started me thinking about, you know, what legacy is. And I think we all immediately jump to, uh, you know, I'm going to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates, and I'm going to leave a billion dollar foundation, or I'm going to have a school in my name, or I'm going to do whatever. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I've come to believe that legacy is nothing more than the things people say about us when we're gone. And so the question is, what will they say about you? And, you know, I came to that realization when I thought about people in my life that are now gone. I have no idea how much money my grandfather had or my or how good my grandmother was at being a nurse or how great my father was at his job. All I remember is the kindness that my grandfather had. All I remember is the empathy and the concern that my grandmother showed. I mean, those are the things that will stick with me forever. So yeah. if you're worried about a legacy, folks, don't do it. Just, just know that to Jim's point, what you are is enough and just share that liberally. Yeah. Mark, one of the best compliments I've ever received, I believe it was in the 90s. I was in my next to last corporate job. And I was talking to one of my colleagues and she said, Jim, I just have to let you know, whenever I talk to you, you make me feel like I'm the only person in the room. I didn't even realize what I was doing. She said, no, 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 there's no distractions, no multitasking, no waving hi to anybody else. You are so there with me present. It makes me feel good. And that happened in the 90s, and I haven't forgotten it since. And I'm very mindful of it now to do that. Before, it was unconscious. Now it's conscious. When I'm talking to someone, there's no one else in the room. You know what you are. I mean, I know, what, I know you know what you are. Uh, but but this, this, this speaks to another one of my favorite points uh, about growing older, Dr. Jim, and that is uh, be an encourager. You, you are a, an encourager. You've encouraged me from the first moment we met in ways that are nonverbal, you know, just by paying attention and, and smiling uh, and, and listening. Uh, and, and I think that as we grow older, this is one of, the, this is a challenge because we all get a little nervous about getting, about coloring outside the lines. And all it takes is our best friend or our husband or, you know, our kids to tell us, are you serious? Are you really <laughs> going to do that? Uh, we need to encourage one another to take chances, to think outside the box, to risk failure, to have fun, to be different, to make a difference. Mm. Mm. Can I share this one last thing with you? Amen. I'm in my office and I have my pictures all around. And when I'm speaking on stage, I don't have that luxury. But right now, there is a big painting behind me. And there's a quote, it's Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston when he knocked him out. 
I'm going to read the quote. I think it really reinforces what we've been talking about. The quote is, champions aren't made in gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside, a desire, a dream, a vision. They have to have the skill and the will, but the will must be stronger than the skill. Hmm. The will must be stronger than the skill. So whatever I said and whatever you've been saying, people got it now. They got it. We even gave them the how-tos. We gave them the skills. Now, going forward, their will must be stronger than the skill. You really are a giver today, Dr. Smith, and we really appreciate that because uh, you know, I know you have to come from your home to your office. Um, they're, they're, you've got two kids at home that need your attention. So, you know, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to come here today. This has been, you know, really, really fun. And I hope everybody gets a sense of who you are and tell people how they can connect with you personally if they'd like to. Absolutely. You can reach out to me on social media, Dr. Jim. My website is Dr. Jim Smith Jr., I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. Dr. Jim, give me a buzz. We can continue the conversation. He's the kind of positive people that uh, we think about when we say that it's important for all of us to hang out with. So, uh, uh, you know, you bless us with your presence. We thank you for that. Uh, Kaylin, I know we uh, want to tell everybody about what's happening with the Daily Well. Um, and uh, let me see if I still have that. And I apologize, I'm not doing a great job. Uh, I do not, but uh, The Daily Well, can you give us the, the, the uh, URL? Yeah, absolutely. Sure thing. So Thank you. If, if you would like to uh, let our audience know what The Daily Well encompasses while, we, while I pull that link out for them. Sure, The Daily Well is a, is a great online communication that's been put together by the Center for Health and Wellbeing and Growing Boulder, and it really is just a cool aggregation of all sorts of different things to help you, you know, continue to move forward, continue to learn, continue to grow, continue to socialize, you know, during the pandemic. Uh, you look behind Kaylin and you see the empty Center for Health and Wellbeing, which is just a beautiful, phenomenal building. And, you know, this is just an effort to try to keep everybody connected to the great resources and the great people that are there. And we just cannot wait to open it back up. I think just over Kalen's left shoulder, you can see the Growing Boulder studio. Uh, those little accordion looking things or lights coming down from the ceiling. So we're anxious to get back there and the Daily Well uh, is just kind of uh, the Center for Health and Wellbeing's gift to all of you out there to help you stay connected with your community. How's that, Kaylin? Perfect, as always. And of course, the Center for Health and Wellbeing's Facebook page is following immediately after. Don't forget to join us there if you haven't already. We do have another question um, from Mary Lou. She said, I could push this down all day and go on and do what I can do, but I have frequent and sometimes terrifying bad dreams and nightmares. I'm aware it is the result of negative thoughts still running in my background, but how do I maintain enough positivity to sleep? Thank mm. you, Mary Lou. My knee-jerk reaction is the two words, primacy and recency. Adults tend to remember the first thing they do and the last thing they do, or the first thing they listen to, or the last thing they listen to. How many times have you heard a song in the morning and sang that song throughout the entire day? I would make sure the last thing you listen to, the last thing you watch, the last thing you read, or the last person you talk to has a positive message. That's what I do. Even listening to Piano by Candlelight, nice soothing music. I've been sleeping to that a lot lately. But I want to enter my evening not having to think hard, not having to focus hard, just to calm down, very gracefully and easily and very positively. So again, what you put in the very last hour, last minute, what you put in here, here, and here is extremely important. And as you're working up to that, stop giving your power away to fear. 
Fear doesn't know more about what you're going to do in the future than you do. We give our power away to it. Maintain and keep your power. Amen. And if you can, exercise. <laughs> uh, it's more difficult than ever right now, but that's uh, you know one of the best best thing help you fit. I know this won't help you get to sleep, but it might make you feel better uh, that you're not alone. There's a very real thing called COVID-induced insomnia, mm. uh, and it's, it's generated by stress. It's the stress that we are all feeling right now. So I think Dr. Jim's techniques are great to reduce the stress and exercise if you can. Uh, you know, this has been really a whole lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I so much appreciate it. You know, I, I think all of us, each and every one of us are, you know, are looking for a path forward, a philosophy that we can embody. And uh, we believe that growing bolder is that philosophy for everyone. It's, it's a reason to believe that the rest of our lives can, in fact, be the best of our lives. And it's difficult for many of us to believe that because we do live in this ageist culture that is pounding us every day with these negative images that tell us what's not possible. So if you get anything out of today, hang out with smart people, figure out how you can control your life, keep moving forward, because we think that growing bolder can be the reason to believe that, that more is possible. Meet new people, try new things, have new experiences, not be afraid to fail, learn new things. It's never too late to make the rest of your life the best of your life. And with that, I will invite you to join us for our next Growing Boulder Presents. Uh, I don't know, Kaylin, it's looking like it might be another virtual edition in the next 30 <laughs> days, but after that, hopefully we'll be able to have some nice socially distanced uh, meetings in the Center for Health and Wellbeing. Uh, Dr. Jim, you've got a final word for us? Yes, and you know, because you called me before and got my voicemail reading, and it says, you'll always get what you've always gotten until you become the person you've never been. Now go be that person. That's my thought. Amen. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Love Kayla, you. Thank you very much. And thank yeah. all of you for joining us. Please be well, take care of yourself and your family, and uh, we'll hope to see you in person before too long.